Good afternoon, everybody. How's everyone doing today? Can everybody hear me okay? Awesome. Good. You guys are doing great. So, to, my name is Amber. <laughs> my name is Amber. I'm one of the exercise physiologists here and also the site lead um, for the fitness center at the Winston-Salem location. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the importance of hydration, especially in relation to exercising. So um, just to kind of start off a little icebreaker, what are some of the reasons that hydration is so important when exercising? Good job. Keeping cool, preventing cramps all the things you're going to talk about a little bit more in detail. So first off, just a little background, the role of water in the body. So water is really important with um, regulating your body temperature. It aids in digestion and protects and cushions vital organs. So you guys should know that the body is mostly made up of water. So if you don't have it in your body, then it's really difficult for your body to function properly. Um, so, uh, when it comes to the body temperature, when you're sweating, that's when your body is overheating and that's just a way for your body to cool down. Think about when you're eating food, if you're not drinking afterwards, for the most part, it's a little bit, it takes a little bit more time for your body to digest the, the food that you eat. Um, and then protecting and cushioning vital organs, that's really important because we don't want anything to happen to your vital organs. Transporting nutrients across cells and dispels waste. So obviously your urine um, is, is mostly made up of water, but it also has a lot of nutrients or um, other waste product that your body doesn't need. And then as far as transporting nutrients, think about the blood. That's a really good example for that. Um, if you have a cut on your hand and there's, a, there's a little bit of inflammation or an infection, your body is going to transport a lot of nutrients through the blood, which is, has a lot of water in it, um, and it's going to look at those. Excuse me, it's going to look at that infection and put some more white blood cells and nutrients to help mitigate that infection. So, of course, the big question is how much water should we be drinking? Um, the Food and Nutrition Board, they recommend that women are drinking about 91 ounces of water a day, and they recommend that men are drinking 125 ounces of water a day. So these are kind of rough estimates. Depending on the person, it may be a little bit more than that, it may be a little bit less than that. But additionally, you have to take into account exercise. If you're exercising and sweating, you're going to want to replenish that water. So you're going to want a little bit more, for women, you're going to want a little bit more than that 91 ounces of water, or for men, you're going to want a little bit more than that 125 ounces of water a day. Um, additionally, especially in the summertime, we're looking at, you know, hot, humid temperatures, and, you know, even when you're grocery shopping, just getting out of your car or <laughs> into the heat, it takes a toll. and because of the humidity and because of the heat, your body's going to get a little bit more dehydrated, a little bit faster. So you want to make sure that you're constantly replenishing the water, constantly um, making sure that you have enough fluids in your body to make sure that you don't get dehydrated. When it comes to water, only about 80% of your total water intake should come from drinking beverages. So about 20% should come from food. So there's a lot of different foods that think of it, like how you prepare your food. Um, you might use water to boil something. Well, some of that water is still going to be in that food or it might soak up into that food. And that's another way that you can get water. So there's different, there's a, several different ways that you can get water throughout the day. So going a little bit onto that, what are some of the foods that you guys think have a higher water content? Watermelon, of course. It's one of my favorites during this time of year. Celery. Um, they also have a lot of the berries. Cucumbers are great. 
tomatoes are also filled with a lot of water. Um, some of the vegetables you guys might not think about are carrots and spinach, um, cauliflower, broccoli. Those actually have, compared to their weight, their um, water content is about 90% water compared to the weight of the broccoli or cauliflower. Do a good job. Now to water loss. Your body loses water mostly through sweat and urine. Of course, there's other ways that your body's going to lose water, such as if you're crying a lot or maybe um, you have a cut and you lose a little bit of blood, um, little things like that. Also, saliva, um, that's another way that your body can lose a little bit of water. But sweating is the major, the, one of the most common. Um, it's your body's method to cool off. It's your body's way to create a homeostatic environment so that you know, you're not too hot, you're not too cold. Um, of course, the heat and humidity and temperatures will increase sweating. Exercise also increases sweating. And the intensity of exercise as well as the duration of exercise will increase your sweating. Some people, um, sweating isn't necessarily due to um, physical fitness. There are some people that, you know, marathon runners, they could take a quarter mile walk and they start sweating profusely. And it's just their body's way of regulating their temperature. Otherwise, there are some people where it just takes a little bit longer for them to start sweating before their body, um, to, for their body to sweat. So it just depends on the person. Of course, if fluids are not replaced adequately during water loss, your, bo your body enters a state of dehydration. That should say dehydration, not hydration. So some things that you know, happens when you're exercising, um, your breathing rate increases, which of course is going to start causing your heart rate to increase. Um, when your heart rate increases, it provides more oxygenated blood to muscles at work. Um, your body temperature rises and that activates your sweat gland a little bit. And when your body starts sweating to lower the body temperature, um, your fluid is also lost a little bit. And that just kind of increases that risk of dehydration. So, so far, are there any questions? No, no questions so far? All right, so let's move on to some signs of dehydration. So dehydration is the inability of the body to cool itself efficiently. Um, one of the first signs of mild dehydration is feeling thirsty. So how many of you might have woken up in the morning and you're like, oh, I feel thirsty, I want some water? And that's a sign of mild dehydration. Um, and that's okay. It, I, one of the things with sleeping for six, eight, ten hours is that your body's in a state of fasting, so you're not drinking water necessarily. So, but if you're out and about, especially on a hot day, you want to keep in mind, like, if you're like, oh, I'm feeling thirsty, your body's already giving you the sign. They're telling, your body's telling you, like, hey, I need some fluids. I need some water. And you want to, you know, aid your body as much as possible. So as soon as you get that sign of thirst, make sure you're reaching for water or potentially even um, if you know you're going to be out and about for, in the heat or humid conditions for a long time, maybe you're at a festival, maybe you want to steer towards a sports drink or something with the electrolytes. Um, but make sure you're staying away from the sodas and the fruit juices or alcohol, anything like that, because that's actually going to increase your dehydration. It's not really going to quench your thirst. Um, and of course, if the fluid balance is not restored, then you can start progressing into the stages of heat-related illness. Excuse me. And especially during this time of year, everybody is at a little bit more of a risk of these heat-related illnesses. So, um, we already talked about this a little bit, but um, some other just 
going back that, you know, July, August, especially hot and hot and humid, you're going to be at a greater risk. Um, and when you're not replenishing fluids correctly, you're going to be at a greater risk of, you know, fluid loss and dehydration. All right, so going into the first couple of stages of heat-related illness. The first stage is heat rash. This is the least severe um, of the four, but it's still, you know, you need you needing to be concerned and paying attention to your body. So one of the first signs that heat rash is basically your body saying, okay, I'm going to start breaking out in some red bumps. Usually it's on the upper neck or the chest, skin folds, so like your elbows, back of your knees. Um, you'll start to get some clusters of red bumps. They may or may not be itchy. Um, the, and that's just your body's way of saying, hey, I'm, I'm, I really need some water. I really don't have enough fluid in me. Um, to sustain what I'm doing right now. So the best thing to do is go to a cooler place, a less human environment. Um, if you're outside, find some shade. Um, and then if you're sweating a lot, the best thing is to pat that, those areas to keep those, keep those areas dry. After heat rash, um, your next kind of symptom might be heat cramps. So with heat cramps, you might have some heavy, swe heavy sweating, but you'll definitely have some muscle pain and a spasm. It might be even like a Charlie horse. It might be really sudden, or it could be just overall, maybe you're walking and you're like, my life feels a little fatigued and maybe my muscles just a little bit tight. That's a sign of a heat cramp. Um, basically, that means your body, again, it doesn't have enough fluid and you know doing the activity that you're doing is just you know putting your body at a little bit too much of a strain so you want to make sure that you stop that physical activity immediately um, and move to a cooler environment again drink that sports drink with electrolytes that this they had that potassium in it is going to help with the cramping a little bit and you want to wait for those cramps to stop before resuming any activity so has anybody ever had heat cramps or a heat rash happen to them before? I can, I will tell you, um, this past Saturday I was at the Blackberry Festival and I did get dehydrated and I got a little bit of the heat rash. I didn't get the cramps, but once I got the heat rash I realized I was like, okay, something's not right got it in the back of my knees and I was like, I am feeling thirsty, I am sweating a lot, I need to replenish my fluid. So first thing I did is went to the vendor, got a big glass of ice water to kind of cool myself down, sat down in some shade to just kind of calm, you know, get my body back to that homeostatic happy place. So, you know, sometimes the thing when it comes to the heat rash and the heat cramp, they're not incredibly severe, they can, but they can turn into something more severe. Alright, so next sign is heat exhaustion. So this is a little bit more severe than your heat cramps and your heat rash. Um, signs are heavy sweating, but with the heavy sweating you have some cold clammy skin. You might start to feel a little nauseous or dizzy or headache. You may even faint. Um, might have a little bit a little bit of confusion as well. So basically, when you're out in the heat or you're exercising too much, it's kind of like okay, I, I'm just not feeling myself. The overall, you're just out of malaise. You're overall, you just don't feel well. Um, your treatment is to move to the cool environment or stop exercising if you're exercising at that point. Um, loosen your clothes. Use cool compresses sip water, don't gulp it. Um, that's a very important thing. If you're at this point, you do really want to sip that water because if you gulp it, your body may reject it just because it's so dehydrated at that point. Any questions on that? Awesome. All right, then the last one we're going to talk about is heat stroke. 
This is the most severe and the most important to be aware of. Um, if you have an excessive body temperature of 103 degrees, um, your heart is, re is racing, your skin is hot, dizziness, confusion, loss of consciousness, you want to call 911 immediately. Um, heat stroke it can be a life-threatening illness, so you, you want to make sure that you are getting the proper fluid. Um, usually to treat this, EMS will do uh, IV, IV of, you know, just fluids and saline just to make sure that you're, you're getting your fluids and getting it quick. Um, so if you, say you call 911, um, whoever is suffering from heat stroke, you want to move that person to a cooler environment as much as possible. Um, and you want to lower, the, lower their body temperature um, with cold compresses on the neck, armpits, and groin. It's very important that someone with heat stroke don't want them to drink water because most likely they're just going to expel it right back up. Um, but the biggest thing is just trying to cool them down, lower the heart rate, um, and try to get them back to consciousness. So, you know, make sure you're calling 911 and do what you can until they get there. So, any questions on this? Hopefully you guys will never experience it. Um, but any questions on anything we've kind of talked about so far? All right. All right, so how do we hydrate during exercise? That's the next big question. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, so the big deal is you water is the best fluid replenishment during exercise. I know there's a lot of push for sports drinks or, you know, some people do chocolate milk. I've had some people bring soda to training sessions and the, there's things are not the best for when you're exercising. Your body really just wants water. Um, but if you are doing an exercise at high intensity, lasting 45 to 60 minutes, then that's when you might want to look more into something with sports drinks to help replenish those electrolytes. Um, also, if you have low blood sugar or low blood pressure, excuse me, then you might want to look at sports drinks also. Um, individual that has salt rings on their clothes after exercise, they, that's a sign that they lose higher amounts of sodium in their sweat. So with that, sports drinks may also be beneficial. Um, so if you notice that after you work out, your armpit has like a little white ring around it, or even after your clothes dry, you, you see little white specks, that type of thing, um, then those are salt rings or salt deposits that are on your clothes. And that just means that while you're sweating, a lot of your sodium in your body is also being excreted. So as we know, water is attracted to sodium. So if you are in a state of dehydration or you know, you're trying to quench your thirst or you know that you're not feeling well because you need more water, and you don't feel like just plain water is doing it for you, a little trick you can do is just add a pinch of salt to your water. I know it's not going to taste good at all, <laughs> um, but adding that little salt to your water will kind of help keep the, salt, keep the water into your body and help replenish the fluid a little bit faster. So fluid balance, that's where it, this kind of all comes down to is making sure that we have that nice little balance between you know your fluid intake making sure you have enough but also making sure that you know when you're losing fluids through exercise or a hot day or you know whatever else that you're able to balance it appropriately so Biggest tips are to drink before the signs of dehydration appear and in order to do that to avoid the signs of dehydration is to drink often and to drink throughout the day. Um, one thing that I think the dietitians will kind of coach people through is that it's not just about drinking a lot of water in the morning or in the evening and then you know maybe drinking juice throughout the day. It's about having water all throughout the day. That's just going to make the difference. Um, 
a way that you can monitor your hydration levels is through your urine. I know after you use the bathroom, you don't want to necessarily look, but I'm advising everybody to do just that. Um, urine, your urine should be a light yellow to a clear color. That indicates hydration. Um, if you're amber, if you're dark amber or brown for your urine, that may indicate dehydration. But also keep in mind that there are some medications out there that can change the color and can affect the urine. So if you feel like you know you're drinking a lot, but maybe there's a certain medication you're on and it, your urine's just not getting to that light yellow or clear, just double check with your doctor and they will be able to tell you exactly. Um, what side effects th that your medication could have on that. Um, also look at your frequency. You should be urinating on average about five to eight times a day. So if you think about that, it's almost every hour that you're up, you should be um, urinating. Some people it's more, um, but you, you should probably get to a point where you know, all right, on average, how, how many times a day I'm urinating. Um, and you can kind of gauge your fluid balance based on, okay, if I know I usually, you know, use the bathroom at this time and this time, and I didn't at either of those times, maybe I'm a little dehydrated. Maybe I need to increase my fluid intake. Um, I know I, I've done that self-check myself, um, and I've realized, you know what, I usually, this isn't normal for me, and I realized, okay, I may be inching on that way to dehydration, so I increase my fluid intakes to, you know, to prevent that. All right, other hydration hints. Um, according to the American College of Exercise, the one of the their recommendations is that you drink 17 to 20 ounces of fluid two to three hours before you're exercising. So if you know you're going to exercise at, say, noon, then you know you should, they recommend that you know two to three hours before that, so 9 a.m., 10 a.m., you want to make sure you're drinking about 17 to 20 ounces of water. So if it's those small, like eight ounce bottles of water or those 16 ounces of bottles of water, you should have at least one of those um, or two of their eight ounces and a little bit more. 20 to 30 minutes before your exercise, so at that 11.30 mark, if you're working out, um, I won't answer that in one second, Ron. Um, so if you, 20 or 30 minutes before you work out, you want to drink about eight ounces. Um, and throughout your exercise, seven to 10 ounces. And then after exercise, about eight ounces. So sure salt tablets be used in hot weather. I will not say yes or no. I strongly recommend that you talk to your doctor beforehand. Um, I, unless you know that you're somebody who's really going to get dehydrated, but if you're going to be outside for a long period of time, you need to plan ahead um, and start with hydrating yourself before, like the day before. Uh, one of the common things that, you know, I was told in school is hyd hydration occurred the day before. Um, prevention of dehydration occurred the day before. So if you know that, say, Friday, you're going to be outside and it's going to be, you know, 98 degrees and incredibly humid, make sure that on Thursday you're really keeping up with your fluid intake and then make sure that you're constantly taking breaks in the hot weather and, you know, making sure you're drinking regularly. And if need be, maybe add a sports drink or a water with electrolyte, like Propel or sodium or um, what a smart water. But I personally will not say you know definitely add a salt tablet because they honestly won't taste that great anyway. Um, but that's something I would ask your doctor about. Are there any other questions with uh, hydration, hot weather, anything like that?
Any other concerns? Hey, I'm glad you guys are liking it. Um, so, just any other questions? We are here for you. Um, it's kind of I kind of shared my story. Like I said, I there. I watch carefully about what I do. Um, as far as this past weekend, had an incident where I knew I was getting dehydrated. But it all boils down to you listening to your body. Um, your body will tell you the signs, and you know if you realize that you may be urinating less frequently, that's a sign. If you realize you're feeling a little more thirsty, that is also a sign. Um, and then you also have to think about, you know, you you need water for essential functions of your body, even things such as eating. Um, your saliva is made out of water, so if you don't have enough water in your body, then you won't have the saliva to kind of help break down certain foods before you even start chewing it. So, again, my name is Amber. Um, I'm an exercise specialist here, so last chance for any questions or concerns, any other comments um, before I start to end the meeting. You're welcome. Um, thank you all. I just do want to let you guys know that if you are on your computer, that on your bottom right you'll see a files box with the hydration and exercise handout. That has basically all the slides that we just went over um, and it's just kind of in a condensed three page form. If you are on a mobile device you can go back to that lobby and it has that link that you can um, copy and paste maybe or you know write down it is case sensitive and you can also access all the handouts as well so that link you might want to save that as a bookmark because all of our past and all of our future um, information sessions group sessions all the handouts for those will be on that link on that drive so Thank you guys very much, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.